and be the same player he is with the Islanders? Maybe. I mean, guy's a winner and he works his butt off and there's something special about that kid. But maybe not. Um, same thing, Brock Nelson. Uh, and do the Wild even need centers anymore? Like, you need a number one center, a true one, but not so much them. Matt Duchesne's the only number one true center out there. And I've got to think that um, the Wild would want to try to avoid a guy that is labeled a cancer in Colorado, obviously did nothing in Ottawa. And right now Columbus on, is on the verge of either on the playoff bubble, either making it or not. I still think they make it. But uh, I don't know. I mean, the one thing they have, they have all these centers suddenly, but not so much a number one center. Somebody on Twitter actually well put said to me the other day. Um, so I, I don't know there. Joe Pavelski, another one that I know the Wild like, Jordan Eberle. These are right shot right wings. Makes a lot of sense. Pavelski could also play the middle. Pavelski's 34, so now you're going to overspend him and coming off maybe a 40-goal season and give him $6 million per. That's the cycle the Wild seem to always get in, and it wind up biting the bullet. You know, Dave just asked about Stahl. You think Pavelski's going to be Pavelski three, four years into a, a, uh, that type of contract? So that's why it's just like, okay, you created all this cap space, but really for what? Like, you know, it's just dangerous to me to go out and, and overspend right now just for the sake of showing your fans that you did something. I'd rather you, almost as miserable as it would be, come back with this type of team, add maybe a couple little pieces, save a ton of money. Maybe it'll piss off the fans that they're seeing a poor product and, you know, label them as being cheap, but there's a a reason for the madness. That that would be the way I'd go. From Todd Bergeth, uh, who actually is the sports director uh, at a station that I'm doing some hits on now out in Wilmer. It's uh, KWLM, if you're out in that area and want to listen, I'm on 530 every night with him. He asked, is Boudreaux safe? Do we know any more about that situation? Um, I, I don't think Craig wants to fire him. I'm sure Paul would love his own coach. The question is, does Paul went out there? Or even if Paul doesn't went out there and Craig wants to keep him, does Bruce want to stay? And, and uh, so... I think that, you know, let's put it this way. If Bruce, this is total conjecture, but if Bruce does not return next year, I could see it not being like a first or second day decision. I could see it being like a weekend when all of a sudden everybody got to meet up and and, and maybe they realize this is not, you know, tenable. And so uh, while I am convinced that Craig doesn't want to fire him, I'm not 100% willing to go on the line saying he'll be back. Let's put it that way. But I, but I think Craig looks at the situation and says this is not his fault. You know, there were a lot of trades made that obviously took the rug out from under this organization. Koivu and Dumba had season-ending injuries. Parisi gets hurt at the absolute world's worst time. You know, four must-win games. They pretty much were done after Arizona. And then last night he comes back in a game that really – you know, we could pretend it meant something. They didn't. They had a 1% chance to make the playoffs. They were not making the playoffs, even if they won last night and Colorado lost. So that's just reality. Uh, just a couple more Twitter questions. We're not going to get to all of them today. We never get to all of them. We do appreciate them. And Michael's going to start thinking of a, just a fabulous final thought or a final sigh. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Zach Spicer, will there ever be a season where the Wild doesn't run Doobie into the ground? Well, I mean, obviously, that's another re- thing that's just so f- shocking is that they obviously don't have a lot of trust in Staylock despite giving him the two-year extension. So, um, because they didn't use him when they needed to. I mean, you know, they they he's only getting older, too. Uh, so I think they've got to figure out. There's always that month in the season where he stinks. And so uh, it's, a, it's a concern. Uh, the hope is that Robson and Cockadin can turn into quality goalies for the future, and we'll see if they do. From MJ, our friend, when is mom coming to visit the mansion? Uh, maybe end of this month or early May or sometime like that. Well, uh, my brother's uh, also coming once in May, then coming back with his family over Memorial Day weekend. If we have a, our live venue set up by then, we'll have to have mom out to that. From mm-hmm. Erica, uh, the Wild understandably seem to be working hard to promote Fiala and Donato through things like public signings and only in Minnesota video. They haven't done the same with Rask. Is that kind of accepting <laughs> the curve? <laughs> That's a great perceptive question. I think you got it, Eric. I don't think they think Rask's going to be around. Well, again, I don't think Fenton has anything to do with that. That's all social media department, PR, and people like that. And I will say, um, as nice a guy as Rask is, uh, personality-wise, he's kind of like, you know, dry white toast. <laughs> so, like, Fiala and Donato are like these, you know, uh, bubbly, you know, kind of fun people. So they're good for those 
social media things where, you know, maybe uh, they think that Rask isn't, um, you know, and, and the other thing, I, you know, that was kind of unfair. I mean, the other thing that I don't know when they've been filming all this, um, maybe they haven't been filming it, you know, uh, maybe they, so, so in other words, maybe, uh, they've been filming, they filmed a lot of this stuff like three, four weeks ago before like every game was a must win situation. So maybe that all happened when Rask was hurt. Uh, I don't know. Thanks to all our sponsors. Thanks to all our listeners. We do appreciate it. Check out TalkNorth.com from Jared Mealy. Uh, we'll, with the Wild Out of the Postseason, we'll be covering the NHL playoffs. Are you going to follow t- uh, Trample by Turtles around on tour instead? Yeah, I mean, maybe the latter. Uh, my guess is I'm not going to be covering the playoffs, which sucks. Uh, but we're fully staffed now at The Athletic. You know, when I was covering Vegas last year after the Wild got eliminated and, and got to cover them against San Jose and Winnipeg, which was an absolute blast, we didn't have a Vegas writer. Now we have a great Vegas writer, and that there, and we also have a ton of national people like like LeBron and Burnside and Custance and, and, and all those people. So I guess it's not, uh, but I'll be around. I mean, I'm going to be still writing a lot. I mean, I'm going to, you know, autopsy this season. Uh, hopefully there's no coaching search. Uh, selfishly, I say that. Um, and then Iowa is going to be an interesting story. You know, they've been absolutely terrible here the last two, three weeks. Um, that's one reason why they try to get Reed back there as soon as possible. But, you know, maybe if Donato Greenway and Conan go down there, it'll give them kind of a boost. Um, and, uh, and we'll see. I mean, so I'll probably go to Iowa a little bit to cover that as long as they go on a little bit of a run here. Uh, MJ, also known as Captain Caveman on Twitter, and Greg, Gregquisition, both asked questions about the scouting development department, about about Fenton's son having a job after only three years of scouting. Let's save those for you know good op- later later um, this month or off season topic. I think we can get really into that, but I don't want to just tack it on to the end of the show. And also use the word autopsy as a verb, so you're dead to me. Pretty little city built on a hillside. Music in the bars and fire in the sky Leaving to the beach and it was covered in